coaster at Peony Playland is one of the most unassuming roller coasters in the world. This coaster's stats will not blow you away. This ride is just 68 feet or 21 meters tall, has a top speed of just 47 miles per hour or 76 kilometers per hour, and a total track length of 2,840 feet or 866 meters. But this ride is one of the craziest roller coasters in the entire world. The airtime on this coaster is unreal. So in this video, I will review this amazing wooden roller coaster that not enough people talk about. POVs of this coaster do not do justice. Located at Playland in Vancouver, Canada, coaster opened in 1958 and is the oldest operating roller coaster in all of Canada. Coaster is nestled in the corner of the park and it earned the distinction as an ace roller coaster landmark. Coaster was designed by Carl Fair who only designed three roller coasters in his entire career. All three of these coasters were located in the Pacific Northwest, and Coaster is the last of its creation still standing. And what I find especially interesting is that there was a 28 year gap between Fair designing Coaster and his previous ride. But Fair definitely left his mark with this crazy coaster. This coaster defines Playland. Most of the park feels like a permanent fun fair especially since I visited during the Pacific National Exposition Fair. But this ride was the one that brought me to the park, and I spent almost my entire day waiting for this coaster. I got five rides in total on coaster, and I had to wait about six to seven hours total for those rides. My work trip brought me to the area during the PNE Fair, which is notoriously the busiest time of year for Playland, and coaster had a full queue line that took roughly one and a half hours to get through. The wait was miserable. The ride was only running one train, for reasons I'll get into in a little bit, and the entire queue is a sea of switchbacks completely out in the open with no shade. I would be hard pressed to think of a worse queue line in terms of the setup and length, but it was well worth it for Coaster. And this ride was so good that I kept getting back in that queue line without any hesitation. If you do want to maximize your rides on Coaster, I strongly recommend avoiding the p &E Fair but I had to deal with that or skip the park and I really wanted to ride Coaster. Many people praise Phoenix at Knobles. Phoenix recently won the top spot on Amusement Today's Golden Ticket Awards for the best wooden roller coaster. And that ride often finds itself near the top of several other poles annually. Phoenix is one of my favorite roller coasters and it's not hard to see why. You have just buzz bars and no seat belts, so you have plenty of room to experience that coaster's airtime and Phoenix has plenty of it, especially during the second half when you're cartoonishly ejected out of your seat. I have a separate review in this coaster if you want to hear more why it's one of my favorite coasters out there, but I always have my hands up and come off with a smile on my face. But I'm going to make a bold statement. Coaster is Phoenix on steroids. This coaster does everything that Phoenix does well, but better. As minimalistic as the restraints on Phoenix are, they're even less restrictive on coaster. You also have no seat belts and just a single position lap bar, but on coaster it rests a little higher and it's a lot thinner. This lap bar is just a thin metal bar. So not only are the restraints even less than Phoenix, but the airtime is even stronger. The airtime in the first half of coaster reminded me of Phoenix, but in the second half I had to hold on for dear life. I did not dare put my hands up. The power of this airtime was downright frightening. Some of the hills had the strength of Ghost Rider's mid-course brake run drop or Raven's fifth drop, which is unreal for a coaster with this type of restraint. I genuinely mean this, but I don't know how coaster's airtime is even legal with those restraints. But coaster goes even further. Whereas Phoenix has seat dividers, coaster does not. So on the turns, many of which are unbanked, you are slammed to the side of the train. And if you ride alone, you're gonna slide side to side across the entire row. It's a really neat sensation you rarely get on a coaster nowadays. The only other ride that does something similar that I can think of off the top of my head is the Coney Island Cyclone. Now I am fearful these trains could change in the future though. At one point, Playland had three operating trains on coaster. A red train, a purple train, and a yellow train. But because they stopped running three trains simultaneously, they decided to turn the red train into a parts donor for the other two trains. Then on British Columbia Day 2019, Coaster had an incident. 
The purple train stalled mid-ride right before the Peony Fair. I was worried I would miss this bucket list coaster. Fortunately, the park got coaster back up and running, but they were only allowed to operate with the yellow train, and that is the only train the ride has run with ever since. My fear is if something happens with the yellow train, they would have to get new trains and I doubt the restraints would be the same. But I don't want to think about that dark timeline. So where should you sit on coaster? Both the front and back are equally as amazing for their own reasons. The back has the stronger airtime, but the front has the stronger laterals. But both rows have airtime and laterals far better than a majority of coasters, so you should try both. Now in terms of smoothness, coaster is remarkably smooth for a 60 plus year old ride. The ride only had some minor vibrations at points, but this ride was extremely re-rideable. The only way this coaster could cause discomfort is from the strength of the forces, not from the track work. Once dispatched, you round a corner and head up the lift hill. Vancouver has a beautiful skyline with the skyscrapers and mountains, so you have a chance to take this in before the mayhem starts. The first drop gives some good floater airtime in the back row, but like Phoenix, Coaster only gets wilder as the ride progresses. The ride then rises up into the first turnaround. Front row riders will get some very strong floater airtime here, and you'll be levitating against the bar for a few seconds. After a slow turn, you'll drop off the turnaround, and back row riders get a very strong burst of ejector airtime as they are slammed into the lap bar. At this point, I could not keep my hands up. You then traverse a giant camelback. Front row riders get their first taste of ejector airtime on this hill, as they are abruptly launched into that lap bar. Back row riders only get a weak pop of airtime on this hill, but don't worry, more airtime is coming. The second turnaround is great for front row riders. The entrance into the turnaround is curved at the apex, so front row riders get a wonderful combination of floater airtime and violent laterals. Back row riders only get mild laterals since the train loses most of its speed by the time you're cresting this hill. But don't worry, the fourth drop is coming. This turnaround is followed by an odd piece of straight track that I believe used to be a mid-course brake run but then all of a sudden, the track disappears. The fourth drop is the steepest drop on the entire ride and one of the most terrifying drops in the world. You crest this drop with some speed, so even front row riders get a tiny pop of airtime. And if you're in the back, you're gonna get crazy standing ejector airtime. This hill really does remind me of Ghost Rider's mid-course brake run drop because of its placement and airtime strength. That's followed by the third turnaround which is barely banked at all. The laterals in the back are good, but up front, they are downright insane. Then comes a twisted airtime hill. Front seat riders get a lethal combination of floater airtime and crazy laterals. Now keep in mind, the prior turnaround will have you finishing on the left side of the train, so this airtime hill, which banks to the left, will mercilessly throw you to the right side of the train. You'll have no chance to reposition your body before this element. Back row riders will not get the laterals on this hill, but the airtime is stronger. It is a powerful ejector pop. Then comes the fourth turnaround. This one delivers the laterals of the prior turnaround, so if you're up front, you're thrown from the right side of the train back to the left side. But unlike the prior turnaround, this one is kinked both entering and exiting. So you get a strong pop of airtime entering this turn if you're up front, and a strong pop of airtime exiting this turn if you're in the back. That is followed by arguably the wildest part of the ride, the back-to-back -back bunny hills. I honestly have no clue how these hills have not ejected a rider. This is as close as I have ever felt to falling off a roller coaster. The airtime is extremely abrupt and powerful ejector airtime no matter where you're sitting. These are some of the best bunny hills for airtime on any roller coaster. Coaster then has one last turnaround that delivers another strong dose of laterals which again are better towards the front of the train. This turnaround gives no airtime though. You then zip over a little bunny hill that gives a weak pop of floater airtime throughout the whole train, and then you rise up into the brake run, which gives front row riders a mild pop of airtime. After each ride, I was still left in awe how strong the airtime and laterals were. I could not believe I was still on the train. Now the last thing I want to address with this coaster is the pacing. Coaster does not feel like a fast ride. That being said, the ride keeps throwing these awesome elements at you. 
you get these lateral heavy turns and some of the best airtime moments in the world, considering their strength and those restraints. So what would I rate Coaster? This ride earns a perfect 10 out of 10 for me. The trains absolutely make this coaster. It gives this ride character few rides can match. The forces this ride exerts, combined with those minimalistic restraints, makes this an experience I will not soon forget. I could not believe how strong this coaster's airtime and laterals were. This ride was trying to launch me into the stratosphere and slam me through the side of the train. It was absolute bliss for a thrill seeker such as myself. Not only do I prefer this coaster over Phoenix, but this coaster is a top 5 wood coaster for me and a top 10 coaster overall. I don't know when I'll make it back to Playland, but it would be solely to re-ride coaster. I know not a lot of people visit the Pacific Northwest for a coaster trip, but this ride really needs to be on your bucket list since it is one of the wildest rides in the world. And if you love Phoenix at Knobles, this ride should be even higher on your bucket list because it's the closest ride out there to that coaster. So those are my thoughts on Coaster at Peony Playland, one of the best coasters in the world that more people need to experience. Have you ridden this ride? Or is Coaster on your bucket list? I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and Muse Park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.